Hi, I'm Dan Q, and you're listening to a podcast that nobody asked for exclusively about things that only I find interesting. Today, I'll be talking about WP Engine. As usual, as a blog post to accompany this episode, you'll find it at danq.me slash WP hyphen engine. WP Engine. If you're active in the WordPress space, you're probably aware that there's a lot of drama going on right now between WP Engine, Automatic, and the WordPress Foundation. I should probably point out that Automatic is my employer, in case you don't know, and my opinions don't necessarily represent theirs. I've actually been involved with WordPress as an open source project for about four times as long as I've had any connection to Automatic, and I don't always agree with them, so I hope it's a given that I'm speaking my own mind. If you're not aware, then, well, just do a quick search across tech news media to see the latest. Any summary I could give you is probably out of date by the time you're listening to this. Once you've caught up, then carry on. Like others, I'm not sure that the way that Matt Mullenweg publicly called out WP Engine at WCUS was the most productive way to progress a discussion. In particular, I think that a lot of the conversation that he kicked off conflates three different aspects of WP Engine's misbehaviour, and that muddies the waters when it comes to having a reasoned conversation about the issue. I don't think that WP Engine is a particularly good company. I personally wouldn't use them for WordPress hosting, and that's not a new opinion for me. I wouldn't have used them last year, or the year before, or the year before that either. And I broadly agree with what I think Matt was trying to say, though not necessarily in the way that he said it, or the platform he chose to say it on. As I see it, WP Engine's potential misdeeds fall into three distinct categories. Moral, ethical, and legal. Now there's a huge amount of debate about the difference between morality and ethics. Today I'm using the definition that means that morality is based on what a social animal, like us, might be expected to decide for themselves is right, like the golden rule. Whereas ethics is the code of conduct expected within a particular community. The moral principle we're going to talk about is that you don't take things without giving back. Matt Mullenweg observes that since WP Engine's acquisition by huge tech company investor Silver Lake, WP Engine have made enormous profits from selling WordPress hosting as a service, and very little else, while making minimal to no contributions back to the open source platform that they depend upon. If that's true, and it appears to be, that would violate the principle of reciprocity. If you benefit from somebody else's efforts, and you're able to, you're morally obligated to at least offer back uh, in a manner commensurate to your relative level of resources. The principle of reciprocity is a moral staple. That's evidenced by the fact that children and non-human animals seem to be able to work that out for themselves from first principles, using nothing more than a little bit of empathy. Companies, however, aren't usually so capable. Abuse of the principle is not uncommon in business, or in tech, or in the world in general. A lightweight example might be the many millions of profitable companies that host atop the Apache HTTP server without donating a penny to the Apache Foundation. A heavier and legally backed example might be Trump Social's implementation being based on a modified version of Mastodon's code, Mastodon's license requires that those changes are shared publicly, but Trump Social doesn't do so until they're sent threatening letters reminding them of their obligations. I feel like it's fair game to call out companies that act amorally, and encourage people to boycott them, as long as you do so without punching down. The ethical principle I wanted to discuss is that One doesn't exploit open source's liberties as weaknesses. WP Engine also stand accused of altering the open source code that they host in ways that maximise their profit to the detriment of both their customers and the original authors of that code. It's well established, for example, that WP Engine disable the revisions feature of WordPress. They claim they're doing that for performance reasons. That's clearly bullshit. It's pretty obvious to me that it's about making hosting cheaper, 
enabling revisions doesn't have a significant performance impact on a properly configured multi-site hosting system, which I know from personal experience of running such a thing. But it does have an impact on how much space you need to allocate to your users, and that has cost implications at scale. Personally, I don't think that the revisions feature missing from WP Engine is as big a deal as Matt makes it out to be. I certainly wouldn't go so far as to say WP Engine is not WordPress, as he did. It's pretty commonplace for large hosting companies to tweak the open source software that they host to better fit their architecture and business model. But I do agree that it makes WordPress, as provided by WP Engine, significantly less good than would be expected from virtually any other host, most of which, by the way, provide much better value for money at any price point. No one's immune from making ethical mistakes, of course. Not me, not you, not anyone else. I remember when back in 2005 Matt Mullenweg fucked up by injecting ads into WordPress, which at that point didn't have a reliable, sustainable source of funding, but he did do the right thing, backpedalling, undoing the harm, and apologising publicly and profusely. As an example of ethics, there's absolutely nothing to stop me from registering, say, turdpress.com and providing a premium WordPress web hosting solution with all of the best features disabled. I could even disable exports so my customers would be locked in and wouldn't be able to leave my service for greener pastures. There's nothing stopping me but that wouldn't make it right. As an aside, if a court does somehow rule that WP Engine is infringing upon WordPress trademarks to the point that they want a new company name, they're welcome to TurdPress. It also looks like WP Engine may have made some more nefarious changes, like modifying the referral links in open source code, you know, the thing that makes money for the author of that code, so that WP Engine can collect the revenue themselves when they deploy that code to customers' sites. To me, that feels like it's clearly into the zone of ethical bad practice. Within the open source community, it's just not okay to take someone else's code, which they were kind enough to release under a liberal license, strip out the bits that provide their income, and redistribute it as a network service. I would argue it's okay to do that for personal use. The difference to me comes when you're making a profit off it. Again, I think that ethical behaviour violations are fair game to call out, even if it's not something that anyone has a right to enforce legally. On which note, the third aspect of all of this is the legal side. Trademarks have value, don't steal them. Automatic has a recognised trademark on WooCommerce, and is the custodian of the WordPress Foundation's trademark on WordPress. WP Engine are accused of unauthorised use of those trademarks. This is the part of the story you're going to see the most news media about, because there's reasonable odds it'll end up in front of a judge at some point, there's a good chance that such a case might revolve around WP Engine's willingness and encouragement to allow their business to be called WordPress Engine and to capitalise on any confusion that that causes. I don't know if anyone else spotted, but there was a bit of a ninja edit to the WordPress Foundation's trademark policy this week. It now has a paragraph which reads, The abbreviation WP is not covered by the WordPress trademarks, but please don't use it in a way that confuses people. For example, many people think WP Engine is WordPress Engine, and officially associated with WordPress, which it is not. They have never once even donated to the WordPress Foundation, despite making billions of revenue on top of WordPress. I'm not going to weigh in on the specifics of the legal case. I am not a lawyer and all that. Naturally, I agree with the underlying principle that one should not be allowed to profit off another's intellectual property, but I'll leave discussion on whether or not that's what WP Engine are doing as a conversation for folks with more legal smarts than I. I've certainly known people be confused by WP Engine's name and branding, though, and assume that they must be some sort of officially licensed WordPress host. It happens. If you're following all of this drama as it unfolds, just remember to check your sources. There's a lot of FUD floating around on the internet right now. You know how a typical Reddit thread is usually about 25% lies and bullshit? You can double that number for any thread talking about this topic. So in summary, 
With a reminder that I'm sharing my own opinion here, and not that of my employer, here's my thoughts on the recent WP Engine drama. 1. WP Engine certainly act in ways that are unethical and immoral, and antithetical to the spirit of open source, and those are just a subset of the reasons that I personally wouldn't use them as a WordPress host. 2. Matt Mullenweg calling them out, by name, at WordCamp US, doesn't get his point across as well as I think he hoped it might, and it probably won't win him any popularity contests. 3. I'm not qualified to weigh in on whether or not WP Engine have violated the WordPress Foundation's trademarks, but I suspect they have benefited from the widespread confusion about their status. Once again, this episode was based on a blog post, which you can find at danq.me slash wp hyphen engine. The blog post has links to a lot more reading and some funny pictures. If you've enjoyed today's episode, go there, leave a comment and let me know. Or email me on podcast at danq.me. And as always, danq for listening. Danq very much.